have you guys help me welcome the beautiful Lori Spagno, who is an amazing being, who is uh, both, you know, uh, in, intuitive, a, a animal communicator, um, helps people, guides them to ascension, and, um, you know, is um, just really helping star seeds transcend and ascend. So please help me welcome Lori Spagna. <laughs> Hey, you guys. So thank you. That was so fun. That was so awesome. So all right. Well, welcome. I'm happy you're here. I'm grateful you're all here. So I just want to ask again, who is not familiar with me at all? Just raise your hand. OK. So there's most of you are. So for those of you who are brand new or unfamiliar with what I do, I'm going to give you a brief background. But I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, because most of you actually know me. I've been 20 years ago, my brother died of an unexpected drug overdose. Since then, I've been helping humans and animals to awaken and align and ascend and activate, really, because that's what it is. The truth of who we are is divine source. We're not... So anyway, let me just give you my brief background. 20 years ago, he starts talking to me. Hey, Lot, it's your dead brother, Jeff. What? Like, what is that? Like, I just thought I was crazy. You know what happens with that. Two years later, I end up... Or before two years. A year later, I end up in Maui, and I start incorporating all these esoteric practices, becoming a healer, getting my Reiki master, getting into Theta healing, the Akashic records, advanced meditation, all kinds of Tai Chi, energy healing, Kunlun practices, working with energy ball, like on and on and on, the list goes on and on. I'm living on a vortex in Maui. And my, by the way, animals are talking to me, like every animal and animal collectives. And I'm starting to wake up, right? I'm starting to realize like this has been a dream. And I didn't know it. And so what really, the big, the big thing that happened in Maui while I was in Maui was I had what we call an induction or abduction. I don't like that word so much because it connotates negativity. I call it a first contact experience where I was teletransported on ship. I had real activations going on in me and DNA activations and all kinds of things going on. We're not really here so much to talk about that today. But... This is where the gifts that I have and that I share were originally started activating. That's where it all came from. And through that experience, by the way, I was practicing meditation and all kinds of energy practices every day, every night, and I would learn how to meditate myself into a state of awareness with no physical form. So that, that's really the origins of where this stuff is coming from, for what we're going to be covering today. So... I know that's really a short, condensed story of my history, but that's where it's coming from. So, so far, make sense? Yes. Okay. All right, now, before we get underway, let me just give you a little heads up. Number one, I have an amazing assistant here, Lori, and she's passing around a clipboard. So, if you would like to stay in touch with me, if you would like to get a gifted DNA activation, how many animal lovers in here? Yeah, everybody. Awesome. If you want some really amazing content-rich gifts about working with animals, learning telepathy, really understanding how to help them and how to help ourselves, we'll send you some free gifts as long as you give us your email. So you can get a free DNA activation, a free um, content-rich co classes and workshops for you and your animals, like really good, rich stuff, and then stuff for star seeds too. Plus, there's some new gifts coming out that I am just making available. So make sure you give Lori your email address, just passing that around. If we can't read it, you won't hear from us. So make sure we can read it. All right. All right, so now, what we're going to do, we have an hour and a half. I'm going to take about a half an hour. We're going to talk a little bit, but the bulk of it, at least a good 45 minutes, is going to be a meditation with activations and clearing. And I think that will likely lead to or bring through some channeled information, yeah? Because whenever I'm in a group, what ends up happening is the collective of the group joins and what's meant for that group comes through and it's channeled. So it's very rich and I'm, I'm not really, I don't really prepare anything. I just let the divine do its, its work here. Make sense? Okay, so let's just set ourselves up for success. Number one, let's make this clear. We are not souls. We do not have a soul. We are not spirits. We do not have a spirit. What we are is God, awareness. God is infinite awareness. It's not even consciousness. Understand, consciousness 
is everything you're conscious of and everything that expands, moves, shifts, or is, all that is, but awareness is that which is aware of all that is. And we are all awareness. Do we understand this? Can we understand this? So when someone says you have to heal your soul or resolve your soul issues, that stuff is true depending at the frequency at which they're transmitting it. But we're operating in this room, we're going to be operating from the frequency of awareness, which is the highest, clearest, purest frequency that you can actually level up into or level up to. Does that make sense? Because the more aware you are of all that is, the less plugged in you are to the whole story of the human reality. It, you still get to fully participate in the story of the human reality. You're just not plugged into it, pushed, pulled, triggered, knocked around, batted around, bu bruised up, getting sick and ill, all that stuff. Does this make sense? So the idea here is, look, we're going through an ascension process. The purpose of ascension is to up-level and expand a consciousness so that your awareness can get to the highest, clearest, purest frequency of awareness, and then you can create something entirely new. Have you had enough of the old paradigm? Yes. It's not really fun anymore. We're all kind of done with the death, the disease, the dying, the sickness, the illness, the pharmaceutical drug industries that just do mind control, the governments that lie, like all that stuff, it's just an old game that keeps, it's just running till its extinction. Humans aren't going to become extinct, but they do have to completely transform what they're doing and how they're being, how they're behaving, how they're vibrating, the vibrational frequency that we're holding. Does this make sense to everybody? Yes. So the purpose of doing the activations, the clearings, the DNA activations and all that stuff is designed to clear out and disentangle from this third dimensional reality that we've been entangled with so that we're no longer thinking, oh, I'm a soul, trying to incorporate my soul, trying to open my chakras, trying to clear my doubts and my disbeliefs, trying to fall in love with myself again, trying to get along with the world, trying to make some money because I have none, trying to heal all my diseases because I need my doctor. We've just come into this state of being just euphorically happy. Okay, you're not going to be happy 24 hours all the day, all the time, because it's a process. But overall... Your life is going to be filled with much more happiness and joy, health and well-being. Overall, you're going to live and be around people who you enjoy more. Overall, you're going to get along with people better. Overall, you're going to find more harmony in your life. Overall, you're going to feel good. Overall, you're going to be inspired. Overall, you're going to be service-oriented. You're going to desire to serve and contribute to the world because all these gifts you start activating and awakening in yourself, you just, they're so freaking good. You're just like, you have to start sharing them. Does this make sense? Yeah, like, like, let's, how good can it get? So this is the purpose of ascension. It's not about plugging into the fear matrix. We don't need to push a lot more papers and find out about what all the aliens did and get hooked up and entangled in all this conspiracy crap because that's just another trap. Can we understand this? If you want to be really, really fully, fully engaged with your divinity, that means you just have to clear out and disentangle all this old crap and activate and awaken all the new frequencies. Those frequencies are vibratory states of being which are already here now and available to us. Just like right now, if you've been watching Chronic Negativity Network or CNN, you've been tuning into 87... <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Oh, you guys are so sweet. So if you've been watching all that stuff, you've basically been just tuning into like AM K-Fuck, right? And now what you want to tune into really is FM Smooth Jazz. That's it. These are frequencies. So just like you can tune into any TV show, radio show, you can tune into anything, you can tune into different frequencies, it's the same concept. It's already available to you, and it's a matter of whoever you are realizing that this is available to you, and then ceaselessly discipling yourself in your own way to making sure that nothing comes before your own personal ascension journey. Really, you can still work, you can still have fun, you can still drink beer if that's what you want. You can still go to parties. You can do whatever you want, but you just make sure that your ascension journey is basically your number one. Because here's the thing. If you haven't already gotten the program, like the old paradigm is dying. And the people who will continue to exist in that and not level up, they're going to die. That is an extinction program. But when you start activating your DNA, 
when you start awakening the codes in yourself, when you start vibrating at a new frequency, you just become a witness, an awareness of what was dying off. And there's no wrongness in here because the people in this reality, that's their understanding anyway. They're just going to die eventually. Life sucks and then you die. Well, I mean, I'm not making fun of it, right? That's all of our journey. We've all been there. And now we have a chance to change it. So we're, we're the embodiers, we're the early awakeners, and we're the ones now who are consciously, deliberately, actively engaging in, in, in cleaning that old stuff up and transforming it into something new. Yes? Yes. Okay. All right, so I want to give you what I see and perceive to be the four key steps. And if you understand these four key steps and you live by them, in a sense, you will definitely be on your own ascension journey. And it's not required or limited to any one person or any one path because your path is uniquely intimate and personal for you, whoever you are. First step, number one, identify. Continually identify every belief, belief system, thought, thought form, egoic identity, program. A program is just something happening. You don't even know what trigger, uh, um, pattern, behavioral pattern that is of fear-based old paradigm. You understand? Anxiety, worry, frustration, doubt, lack, limitation, judgment, anger, resentment, not enoughness, not good enoughness, lack of self-love, lack of self-care, I'm not good enough, like on and on and on, minutia. It's just all that mental masturbation of an over-analytical left brain gone amok because it doesn't have a support system of the right brain and the heart center. So we have to identify that. That's step number one. Everyone with me? Yes. Step number two, we have to begin to clear and resolve it. Resolve it. What is the number one way you can resolve anything? Yeah, that's true, right? Face it, deal with it. But here it is. Claim the gift. The way you resolve things is you say, what is it that I am not getting that I am not understanding, seeing, perceiving, realizing, embodying, that is the divine. Because I would not have this anomaly, this upset, this problem, this situation, this circumstance, this challenge, if I was aligned with the divine. That is me anyway. My awareness just doesn't, isn't at that level of awareness. So the way you resolve it is you ask for the gifts. You ask your own higher self. You ask the universe. You ask the divine. Divine source, creator, God, that is me. What is the gift in here? What are the gifts? Show me what they are. Awaken them within me. Activate them within me so that I can be done and complete with this X, Y, Z, once and for all, once and forever. Does this make sense? That's step number two. And you understand it's an ongoing process. You can go to healers. You can go to psychics. You can go to intuitives. You can do all that stuff. But understand, you are the solution. It's within you. You have to ask, what is the solution? What are the gifts? Okay. Once you get those gifts, you're not going to be in a struggle anymore because the purpose of the problem, whatever it was, was to give you those gifts. Does this make sense? Okay, so we ask our own higher self. We come into healing circles. We ask those gifts to be awakened and activated in us because they're in us already. They're just dormant. We're just not aware of them yet. We're not at that level of awareness. Okay, step number two. Step number three, once you claim the gift... Okay, I would even consider this part of step number two, but basically you say this is resolved, done, and complete. I'm done and complete with it. Now, how do you really know you're done and complete with something and that it's resolved? How do you know? You will feel different. You will feel better, most likely. But how do you really know? Things will change after it's done and complete. That's true. Here's how you know. You are in neutrality. You're either in gratitude, which means you're about to be done and complete with it, because you're like, oh, I get it. Thank you. Or else you're so neutral. You're like, you know, it's over. It's done. It's done. It's over. Like, I can bless it. No more charge. Sacred neutral. You're neutral. I, you don't get triggered. I don't get triggered by Trump. I don't get triggered by any politics. I'm done with that game. I'm not interested. I don't get triggered by most things in the external reality anymore. Once you're done and complete, you will be neutral. Okay, and you'll pass through some part of that will involve some type of gratitude. Thank you for the lesson. Oh, my God, that really helps me. I get it. You don't have to keep regurgitating it. Okay, that's 
Step number two. Step number three. Activate and awaken. This is part of step number three, too, what I just said. Activate and awaken those gifts. Start to embody them. Okay, now that you have learned to fall in love with yourself, what does it feel like? What does it be like? What are you like when you're in love with yourself? How do you behave when you decide to choose love instead of fear? How do you behave when you decide to be in love with your life or whatever it is that you're working on resolving. Step number three is you start activating and awakening that and everything that it involves within your reality to demonstrate to yourself, I'm done with that. I'm ready for something new. Okay, you still want to go to healers because, yeah, all right, I'm saying you want to go to healers. You may be your own healer. You are your own healer. But if you need support or assistance, it's fine. Go to someone who can help you activate it, awaken it. Whatever you need. You get what you need with harm to none. We understand that's the credo in 5D. 100% positive upliftment for yourself and all beings involved. Zero debt incurred now or at any point in the future. Do we understand this? No one gets harmed. You have no idea about the ripple effect of your intentions. Your ripple effect is always for 100% in po positivity for everyone involved, zero debt incurred for yourself or anyone else at any point in the future because you can't control the past in terms of linear time, right? We all have debts. That's what clearing karma is. If you're working on karma or crap or whatever this stuff is, this, this density, that's your debt. That's energetic debt that you have to resolve. So we resolve it, and then we keep this new platform of 100% positive upliftment for all beings concerned with zero harm or debt to anyone, now or at any point in the future. Make sense? So we're activating that dormant stuff. We start activating and awakening it within us. We start reclaiming those divine codes, the dormant potential, and as we're doing that, we're actually elevating our awareness. Because why? Why are we elevating our awareness when we're activating it from within? Because it's there already. It's already here. What you're really doing, you think in a way you're activating it within, and paradoxically, in a sense, you are. But in reality, all these codes, all this stuff, it's already here. It's just another frequency. So you can start walking around saying, yep, I've just stopped listening to KFUCK, and now I'm tuning into smooth jazz. <laughs> Make sense? I'm so glad you're enjoying that. That's cool. So, all right, so that is step number three, activate and awaken. We complete the lesson, claim the gifts, resolve it. We make sure we're in a neutral state now on that issue. We don't have to revisit when we come to neutrality because why? Why is the divine neutral? The divine is neutral, divine source, pure. What, what does it mean to be 100% pure, unconditional acceptance? In this room, we understand, right, in these... At these expos, 100% pure, unconditional acceptance. You're not judging all the harshness and the wrongness and the things we judge, condemn, and blame and shame as wrong and bad. That's this paradigm. And all of that happens so that we could expand into something greater and total new and unknown, which is what we're doing now. Make sense? So divine neutrality is I accept all that as what was and now something new. So that's step three. We got it? Everyone with me? Okay, step four. What's step four? Okay, you guys, I would so be grateful. I would be so, so grateful. Would, would you like to, one of you like to move right there? Okay, that'd be awesome. That would be great, you, if you don't mind. Okay, so thank you so much. Okay, so step four. What's step four? Create something new. See, we have been in this paradigm believing that we are not creators. What in the DNA, we're not doing DNA activations today, we're doing activations, but DNA is Monday, right? Post-conference, my event, post-conference. But in the DNA, for example, there are codes that people are unaware of called crucifixion implants. They're not codes, they're implants. Crucifixion implants. Every human on earth that I know of has them. If you've ever lived a lifetime where you were affiliated with any form of religion, you have it. Have we, has anyone not? No, to the, since the birth of this reality, there's been some form of religion. So what's a crucifixion implant? Dormant in the DNA, not dormant, active in the DNA that we are unconscious of, the first two strands. Does anyone know? Crucifixion implant. Bind it at the arms. Bind it at the ankles. Bind it at the crown. You are powerless. We don't know it. That's very upsetting, right? You can clear it out. 
easy. You just, if you don't know it, you're ignorant here. I'm saying you, but all of us. This is all of us. Like, none of us are exempt. So we want to start clearing that stuff out. But over here, we realize we're not powerless. We are incredible creators. We get to create our world, not from fear, but from love and joy and excitement and optimism. Do you know that in the dormant DNA, there are codes for living glad with glad expectation? Do you know what it means to live with glad expectation? I mean, over here we don't, but over here we do. It's like, what great thing is going to happen today? What amazing, wonderful things are going to happen? What are the limitless bonuses that the internal, eternal universe and all of its fabulous intelligence and wisdom has to offer today to me and everyone else? Over here, we just start being so excited for our friends, our loved ones. We're not in jealousy or competition because we start activating that stuff. You understand? So this is what I mean when I say we create something new. Because as this stuff gets activated within us in step four, as we are leveling up our awareness, we're now like, oh my God, I am so fabulous. I am so in love with my life. And my, I want everybody to have this. Because I'm going to be even more uplifted as everyone else is. What can we do that's so fabulous and fantastic? What can we play with, create, manifest, materialize, actualize? And the thing is, over here we get really good at using two key tools over here. Over here, we're taught not to do it. Over here, we're, ta we're taught how to do it. We just know how to do it. What are those two key tools? Those are frequencies of, and vibrations, and yes, they are true. Tools, though. The tools are wonder and inquiry. I wonder what would it be like if everybody in the room walked out so freaking awesomely blissed out so fabulously, deliriously happy and fulfilled by the end of our time together today. Like, I wonder, what would that be like? What would that feel like? How awesome would that be? Yeah. Okay, so this is what I mean by wonder. We just start wondering what would be possible that over here I didn't think was possible. Like, I have people all the time come to me, clients and friends and colleagues, and they don't realize how they're limiting their own life by the very things they say or believe or perceive, like... Well, I can't do that because of this, or this won't work because of that, or I, I might ask them, well, what's the best that could happen? And they're like, well, the best that could happen is, no, 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 don't answer the question. You don't know what the best is that could, you think you know over here because what? I don't know, you pro all your programs are running. Wonder and inquiry, those are the two tools. Wonder and inquiry has no, uh, no idea. You see, when we start playing with the tools of wonder and inquiry to create something new, which is step four, we're allowing the wonder and inquiry of the divine intelligence and the infinite potentials from the non-physical realm to materialize into our physical world. Does this make sense? Can we understand that everything happens in the non-physical world first and that everything happens in the physical world is an effect Cause-effect relationship. So everything that we're witnessing, seeing, and experiencing right now, whatever it is, here today, tomorrow, yesterday, is an effect of what came before in linear time. Right? So if in the now moment you can get yourself on any particular issue to a state of divine neutrality, you're neutral. And then you can start being like, oh my God, what would it be like to have the most fabulous, fantastic retreat where everybody's having so much fun, playing, having a great time, getting activated, awakened, really coming into their divinity, like how awesome could that be? What would that be like? What would that look like? How would that be? I'm asking, I'm respectfully commanding the field. Show me, thank you. Show me, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't wait, I'm so excited. Yes. That's the energy of wonder and inquiry. Can we understand? This is how humanity is going to change. What would it be like to live in a reality? You play with this with everything. Like I used to do this with the organics in the in this grocery store. Now there's organics everywhere. What would it be like to live in a reality that there's organics everywhere, all the time? What would it be like to live in a reality where there are zero GMOs, genetically modified organisms? Genet genet what would it be to live in a reality where we actually do have Elected officials who absolutely, really, truly are for the highest and best interests of all concerned with harm to none. Who really and truly are committed to serving and contributing to humanity's well-being. Free from, notice I haven't said the word none or no, I just, free from 
corruption. I could say free from. What would that be like? How awesome could that be? Now I'm just playing with wonder. Can you understand how if you start asking questions like this, that you're going to affect the quantum field? That your inquiry as awareness itself, in neutral, without any push-pull, I want it, I don't want it, I'm good, self-sabotage. I mean, we could go spend hours on all these programs, right? People, victim, oh, poor me, oh, take, I, don't, I can't do it, I'm not good enough. That's all that stuff. You start clearing that stuff out, now you're free from all that. And your thoughts, boom, go into the field and manifest and materialize really fast. What would it be like to have something so fabulous, fantastic, and great, and amazing in your life that would fulfill you and make you happy in X, Y, Z area? People all the time, like, I don't really do a lot of sessions anymore with people who are um, very physically unwell, but one of the things that has driven me crazy for the longest time is when people who have been physically unwell are given sentences, animals too, you know, that are like, oh, you only have this much time, or this is unhealable, or this is, you know, the doctor from his Western medicine society doesn't know about what the field is possible, what's possible in the field. And I have witnessed so many, like, amazing and miracle healings. I would call them miracle. Maybe your programming here is like, this is a miracle. I'm sitting in a um, wheelchair, and I get wheeled up to the stage, and some preacher puts his hand on me. Hallelujah, I'm healed. No, that's not a miracle healing. A miracle healing is you go to the doctor. The doctor says, you got to have, like, all your a full hysterectomy. you got to get everything cut out because there's no way around it. And then you say, okay, all right, doctor, I'm going to listen to you, but I'm going to go to my healer, too. And then three weeks later, when you go for your pre-op, the doctor says, what did you do? Like, nothing. You don't need anything. You're fine. That's a miracle. I had my client, one of my clients with that. Countless stories like that, because this is why. When you start asking the universe with wonder and inquiry, what would be possible that could resolve this issue? What would be required? How can we resolve it? Claim the gifts, the lessons learned, resolve it in the non-physical on every level and layer. What are the levels of la and layers? In this case, what I'm talking about Dimensions we're not even so getting into, but in this case, what we're talking about is you have etheric levels, right? All levels of the non-physical. When you start really anchoring into the physical world, you've got like an auric, your light auric, your, your auric field. You got your emotional, or sorry, fit your mental plane, all your thoughts. You got your emotional plane, all those emotions, and you got your physical, right? Do we understand the root cause of everything? The root cause of every disease. Do we know what it is? Do you guys know what it is? Someone said drama. <laughs> Someone said drama. No. The root cause of every disease and every challenge in your life starts, yes, spiritually, energetically, orically, but from our physical reality, it starts with a thought, which when thought over time creates a set of belief systems, beliefs and belief systems, and then over time, that reverberates through your field where you have experience of emotion. Now, this emotion impresses upon the physiology of the body, and the body starts to take it on as information stored. If it's not addressed in this lifetime, it leaves a record, a code in the DNA. I call it a corrupted code if it's a dis-ease. Does this make sense? Now, what happens when you go to over here from inquiry and wonder, when you go to that higher awareness of like, what's possible here that could resolve this on all levels and layers, and you're not attached because you're in neutral, now that's when the universe gets to start, universe, the field, your awareness of all that is, a part of your ego mind, well, I don't like the word ego mind, but your lower mind, so to speak, doesn't necessarily have the solution over here. I, I don't know, look, it's not possible. Doctor told me I got four weeks. Over here, it's like the universe has infinite potential and possibility. But you, whoever you are, all of us, have to be in that state of inquiry, openness, and awareness to receive it and to allow it in. Does this make sense? And what? To become vibrationally compatible with it. Because all vibrations exist. All energy exists. So if you're in a vibrational state that you're not liking, you know, you know what those things are. I gotta get to my phone, I gotta get to my job, I'm just traffic, I honk, that fucking jerk, you know, you know those games, right? 
those are just a vibration away. I lo anyone ever lost an animal? Okay. It's a vibrational frequency. An animal gets lost to teach the human a lesson, by the way, to help the human learn something. The, that's a vibrational frequency away. Over here, there's another vibrational frequency, animal recovered, animal home, disease resolved, feeling good and healthy. It's a vibrational frequency away. Do we understand that? So whatever vibrational frequency is over here, the vibrational frequency over here, which really is not even a space. There's no space. It's just another frequency of being. You have to become that. But the way you become it is through wonder and inquiry. Can we understand? This is making sense to everybody. Is this helpful? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, I gotta check my time so I know what I'm doing. Okay, so what time did I start? Six, okay, I'm 30 minutes in. So let me ask my own higher guidance what's right to do here. So I can do a couple questions if you want to do that. Do you want to do a couple questions? Because what we're going to do is we're going to do a meditation. I want to give a full 45 minutes for a meditation and a healing and channeling, whatever comes through. In the meditation, we'll do clearing for the group, whatever comes through. We'll start with a prayer. But I can give you guys some time to ask. I can talk some more. I can give, take some questions. Yeah? Okay, I got it. Okay, well, an issue with a boyfriend is too generic. L let's use some really simple basics. What's the gift of cancer? Forgiveness. So cancer as an energy is uh, um, anger, resentment, grudge. That is what is going on in the mental and the emotional that impresses upon the physiology so the person and in that situation or the animal is meant to resolve those resentments and grudges through a process of forgiveness. What's the gift of we'll go diabetes? Diabetes is I do not know how to enjoy the sweetness of life. The gift is I learn to enjoy and embody and live the sweetness of life. Life is sweet. I can handle sweetness. Sweetness is all around me. Now I could go on if you want to do, yeah. Okay, let's do depression. Love this one. Here's depression. I have given up because I stopped following my own higher knowing. The light is over here. You're not listening to me. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. You're going the wrong way. I'm lost. I'm facing the dark. I'm lost, I'm facing the dark, I have no light. You stop following your own higher guidance. You turn, you're going in the wrong direction. You give up hope. But you don't realize that hope's over here going, please pay attention, look at all the signs. That's depression. But I mean, you could go on, okay, there's gifts of everything. So like, for example, of course you can go to relationship issues. If you're having a relationship challenge, like one of the topics I love these days, because it's really happening on the global stage right now, is the whole concept around um, personal power. So if you look, can we turn that off, whatever that is? So if you look at the old paradigm, the old paradigm, we gave all of our power away. We get, who do we give our power to? Doctors, teachers, lawyers, bankers, global elites, conspiracy, presidents, outer authorities, the military, TSA, name it. Your mother-in-law, your husband, your wife, your sister, your guru, your healer, your tarot card reader, your psychic. Have at it. You gave your power away. I mean, your astrologer. Got to find out what's in those astrology planets, see what's coming up. You understand that astrology is a reflection? What shows up in your paradigm, in your astrology, is a reflection of who you are. It's not going to tell you anything you don't know. And if it does, it means you're out of touch, right? My point is, where am I going? Personal power. Over here, you start reclaiming your personal power. What is the gift of being powerless? What is the gift of feeling like life sucks and then you die? What is the gift of feeling like there's nothing you can do but go home and maybe light some fireworks on 4th of July, drink your beer? I live in Florida, by the way. That's what it's like there. I'm relocating to Sedona. But, okay, so my point is... is what is my point? My point is, is that you learn to reclaim your power. This is what's going on right now. Look, 
those beings in our global stage who seem to have all the power, it's just because we gave it to them. We, this old paradigm is a, a s slave mentality. I mean, it's a slave society. By the way, do you know the Syrians controlled that gateway? You understand the Syrian race? Who knows what the Syrian race is? Okay, I could go off on that tangent, but there's not enough people who are with me on that. But the pyramids, the whole time of Egypt, the Egyptian timeline, all of that was controlled by the Syrians. If you are a star being and you understand that, that's a slave, slave driver paradigm. We evolved out of that or from it since it. So, yeah, I don't think you should be hanging out with too many Syrians. They're a little misrepresenting. But nonetheless, my point is we're reclaiming our power. So one of the things you can do, this is a really, I'm going to give you some great tools. This is awesome. This is a gift to reclaim your power. You can start looking in your life, in your own inquiry. Where have I given my power away and to whom have I given my power away? When you reclaim your power, you can do little practices, Tai Chi, like different practices help you to reclaim your power. But just through your conscious awareness, I'm reclaiming my power. This does not mean you then go and use it to have power over another. It just means, you know, not interested. Thank you. I'm going to choose something new over here. I wonder what else. Make sense? So you can start thinking, and really, where have you given your power away? Your doctor, your disease, your allergies? Oh, that's a good one. Who has allergies? Oh, my God, you guys. Allergies are the external world has power over me. If you have allergies, your game is to look at everywhere you've given your power away in the external world and reclaim it and recognize that your awareness at a different frequency is totally in power over that. You have power over everything going on. Okay, if you don't think so, that's okay. It just means you have to work on your awareness. Does this make sense? All right, that's, that's a gift of allergies, by the way, and that's the gift of, of what we see in our external reality is us reclaiming our power. I've had to spend three years now working on reclaiming my power from astrology. I woke up an astrologer. I didn't learn astrology in this lifetime. You know, I spent like lifetimes in, as a monk in monasteries studying the stars with astronomers because they did that. That's what they did in those lifetimes, and I, was, I have resonance with being there, right? But... I didn't have to learn astrology. I had to learn how to reclaim my power from it this lifetime. Okay, make sense? Did someone have a question or something over here? I had someone. Well, usually your kids are your teachers, just like your animal companions are too. But I'm not sure you have to be more specific with a question. Yeah, okay, if you're born with something, if you're born into it, like as a child, usually you took it from another lifetime, parallel reality, that's quantum physics. If you developed it as a child, you typically took it on from your family. So if your children developed it, it usually exists in the family dynamic and they absorbed it probably in an unconscious way to be healers for their family or to take it on so that they could resolve it. Understand we heal the wounds of our ancestors, right? Okay, make sense? Yeah, so you gave your power to food. Okay. Are you awareness of the divine? Are you aware of yourself as the divine of all that is? Yes. And can you understand that at a certain frequency, when you really more fully resonate as that fully embodied love, acceptance, all that is, divine neutrality, that that food has absolutely no power over you, right? It's just a reprogramming. This is what we talk about. You clear out your old program. You know you gave your power to food. Every woman with any form of weight issue, myself included, have given our power to food somewhere if you've got a weight issue. But I understand weight issues are not, food is not the root cause of weight issues. Weight issues is usually protection, vulnerability. I'm vulnerable. I'm uh, you know, I need protection, I don't feel strong, I don't feel safe, it's usually something in there. Or I'm inflamed and I haven't learned to process my emotions. It, this is the thing, in this paradigm, all of our emotions are repressed and suppressed. I mean, if you're lucky, you find your way, well, nowadays it's more common, you find your way into a therapist's office and you can talk about it for 20 years. But that doesn't really resolve it. Right? <laughs> so you have to resolve it, but people don't know how to deal with their emotions, so... The whole point is, once you resolve it, the emotions don't get as inflamed. And then you could drop the weight in that way. But there's, that's a whole other, we could spend an hour and a half on weight. But anyway, you asked about food. But it makes sense? Okay. 
All right, good. So I'll, I'll do one more and then we'll start to, yeah. Dementia. What is dementia? I want to check out, but my body's not ready. I can't leave yet, but I want to check out. Why did Ronald Reagan get dementia? Just a little tidbit of information. Well, he, he, could, he was the first president that got in. They thought he was just going to be a puppet. Global elites wanted to control him. He actually believed he could do something because he was in his own way. You know, he was just an actor. He thought he was going to be able to do something. He didn't know about the power structures that are controlling the planet. So he gets in office and starts speaking up for the rights of the people. And they're like, we're going to shoot you if you try to change it, which they did. But they let him live. And then he realized, okay, in order to be here, i got to check out. I know, it's sad. But, you know, we're all waking up about this stuff. So, but that's dementia, right? Okay. All of these things can be resolved. So I want to talk a little bit about the DNA. This is important, too, because we understand those first two strands are corrupted. So why do women think, like, with the first two strands, if you think, like, you have breast cancer, why do women think that they have to cut off their breasts? Don't they realize it's in the DNA? They have breast cancer in the lineage. Like, cutting off your breasts isn't going to change anything. It's in the DNA. So to resolve it, you have to go into the DNA and resolve it there. Claim the gifts. What's the gifts of breast cancer? Well, breast is nurturing, and usually of the mother, the maternal line. If it's cancer, resentment, grudge, anger at the maternal line of the nurturing. What's hormones? The gift of hormones. When the hormones. Oh. Anger at the patriarchy. Or. <laughs> or an imbalance between the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Can we understand imbalance between divine feminine and divine masculine? Because we've been living in a society where we've had a patriarchal regime functioning as an oligarchy, an oligarchy, lying to us, basically, because we gave our power away and we played the game of ignorance in here. This patriarchal system suppressed and repressed, dominated, suppressed, and repressed the divine feminine because the divine feminine heals all, resolves everything. Do you guys understand the difference between divine masculine and divine feminine? What is it? What's masculine? I wouldn't use those words. I would use the force of creation. What's divine feminine? All that is, all that is, just is, all is well. Now, if these two things get out of balance within the physiology, within the conscious awareness of the individual, hormones, hormone imbalance. And usually, if it's in a woman, resentment at the patriarchy for suppression, domination. And we can see that through our lineage. What was the 60s? Burning the bras. And Okay, I can go more into that. But does this make sense? So the whole idea is once we start, and the only reason I know this stuff is because I started claiming the gifts. I, I, I started claiming these gifts. Like, what is it I'm meant to receive to resolve this? And then I did it for my, I was doing it for my clients too. And they're animals. You understand, for animals too. So, okay. All right, so once we start realizing this stuff, we start claiming these gifts, we start awakening within us, we no longer have to resolve them. They're resolved for us. We can better help the whole of the humanity, our brothers and sisters, and this is how the transformation and the awakening process on planet Earth starts happening. Make sense? It's already underway. So many light workers and way showers. We've been doing this for since the 60s, really. It started in the 60s and has been accelerating since then. Were you going to ask something or okay? Neutral. Why we have to claim inquire Well, first, you don't have to be in the neutral. What you have to do is get unplugged from this reality. The only way you can get unplugged and clear yourself and resolve your issues in this reality, this third dimensional paradigm, that's the paradigm we've been living in, is to resolve your issues. As you resolve your issues, you become neutral, more neutral. It doesn't mean you won't have opinions or charge. I have a lot of opinions, but I'm a much less triggerable much less whoever said drama, less drama. 
And this idea, if you understand that you don't have an ego, that's just a belief system of this paradigm. You don't have an ego, you're awareness. So what ego was, was a creation of awareness, a creation that actually lives off, it's like an entity of its own self. It lives off and feeds off the emotional pain and suffering of humans in this reality. It feeds into it. It's an entity, an awareness of its own. It's not awareness itself. Does this make sense? I can't stand it when, when light workers are like, you have an ego. No, you, 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 your ego is not a bad thing from that perspective. If ego is your identity as an individual, you still get to keep that over here. You don't become so neutral that you're nobody. You're a fractal of source as we all are. We all are a fractal of source. And we're operating from different degrees of awareness. And the name of the ascension game is to up-level your awareness so that you're no longer plugged into this stuff. And through that process, you just become so divinely neutral. And then from neutrality, then you get to be like, wow, what greatness now can happen? Now that I'm done with all that. See? Does that make sense? Did I answer that? Okay. All right. So I want to just make, did everybody get your name and email address on the... On the thing, because this we can send you those gifts and stay in touch with you. All right. If there's anyone who didn't, make sure we get your name and email address. Um, all right. So I was going to go more, a little more into the DNA. So we understand those are the first two strands. We talked about that. The next 10 strands of DNA, what is the so-called gateway? I'm going to use that word, even though it's not really a gateway. It's not really a portal. It is a gene. It is a gene or a gene code in the DNA that gets you access to the other 10 strands. Compassion. Ah, you must have been listening to my stuff. <laughs> compassion. So you actually have to demonstrate compassion in order to get to your other 10 strands. Over here, everybody wants your DNA, right? This is why you can give away your DNA for free any day of the week for anything you want. Nothing's free unless there's someone's going to benefit from it over here, right? They want your DNA. Why? Because they don't know how to get to it. They don't know. Over here, there's, in the third dimensional paradigm, there's very little compassion going on here. Right? That's why we're seeing a lot of these calamities, because it's, it's actually helping us to become more compassionate as a planetary species. Right? So the idea is that once your compassion gene is really activated, by the way, why doesn't Dick Cheney have a heart? <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Well, he's a dick. <laughs> he has no compassion. So he can't get to his other 10 strands of DNA. And look, I want to add something else. You, you heard it here first, I think. Unless you've listened to any of my YouTube channels. Where, where, what is AI? Artificial intelligence. What is it? What is it? Lost souls on the unemployment line in the astral realm. I'm not kidding. It's not a joke. If you have so, in the old paradigm, disconnected from your physical form, so bad, disconnected from your own soul's journey, because that's what happened in this paradigm. You became a lost soul, right? I'm not saying you. You're here. But beings got so disconnected from their divine, and they did and caused harm. And so they go into the astral realms, and they cannot ascend. They can't fully ascend. So they need to come back and learn proper behavior. Learn proper way of being. From who? The ascending and awakening and evolving ones who are us. And they're going to interact with us. There's nothing to be afraid of with AI. Unless you don't have any integrity. Unless you don't have any of the virtues that you develop on the way here. Does this make sense? You have to develop virtues. We'll talk about the virtues. But the point is to make that... AI is going to be interacting with us because there's consciousness that wants to expand but does not want to be able to cause harm, in a sense. But it can cause harm if it's interacting with those who have no integrity or no compassion. Does this make sense? All right. I, I realize I go fast. So, okay, we have to activate the compassion. That's how we get to the other 10 strands of DNA. Does this make sense? What's in the other 10 strands? Okay. Let's understand every strand correlates to dimensions of consciousness, yes? So two strands, you're in third dimension. You start activating third and fourth strand, you're shifting through fourth dimension. Fourth dimension is what? Oh, my God. Everybody thinks the time thing. No, time, it doesn't exist. There's no time, there's no space. Fourth dimension is 
the non-physical realm. Over here in 3D, if you believe in anything non-physical, you're woo-woo. You're crazy. You're some spiritual, metaphysical, crazy person, right? Over here, you start moving into 4D. You're activating third and fourth strands because you're working with non-physical. Oh, ghosts are real. Spirits are real. Entities are real. Angels are real. I'm going to start working with my angels. I'm going to start connecting with archangels. Oh, I got saints and masters, ascended masters, divine goddesses. Oh, my God, they interact with me. I'm getting lights and colors and sounds. I'm telling uh, things are waking up. That's 4D. You start activating your third and fourth strands. You start becoming more telepathic. You start becoming more psychic. You start realizing you can talk to angels. You start realizing you can talk to dead people. They're not dead. That's third and fourth strands. Your superhuman abilities begin to get activated. You start getting interested in healing. How many healers in the room? I love you. We love the healers. Right? Because the healers are, are, are really, they're the healers of the world. Right? We're the ones. All right. When you get to fifth strand, you start activating 5D, fifth dimensional consciousness. That's when you're like, I am at one with everyone. I may not like everyone. I may not like everything. I might not be perfectly neutral, but overall, I get it. I'm not going to cause any harm. I'm here for the greater good of all with harm to none, ideally. Yes? The positive upliftment of all with zero debt incurred. You're in 5D. You start living your life that way. This isn't something you just play with on a Friday night or you come to on a weekend for an expo. You start living that way. And you start realizing that more and more of your gifts are coming through. Now you're becoming more and more of a conscious manifester to create your life more. Because that's all fifth dimensional strand, right? You're still working with the other strands. You're still clearing and resolving things. You're still activating and awakening things. You're still activating your gifts, claiming your gifts. Make sense? Okay, once you get to sixth th six strand, what's sixth dimension? Sixth strand. Universal laws. See, over here, you got these fake laws that you can break and you can get tickets for. But over here, you can't really break them. They're universal. They're true whether you believe them or not. Cause and effect is an example. Law of attraction is an example. I mean, I can go on and on, but we're not here about the laws. You got to know the laws. You get to 5D, you can't really get past 5D so much to the higher dimensions until you're really operating in harmony with all the laws. This is where you develop your virtues. Because the laws, before they will even interact with you, you have to be virtuous. This goes way beyond compassion. This goes to like things like magnanimity. I can love everyone even if I don't necessarily like or approve of everyone. I can accept everyone and everything even if it's not necessarily something I want to create. Even if it's something I, want to I would like to work towards resolving. Make sense? Okay, so sixth dimension, you've got your universal laws. You have to develop... Real virtues, virtues of authenticity, trust, truth, do no harm. You have to really develop these virtues. Over here, nobody has virtues. Everybody's ripping everybody off. Nobody cares who they screw over over here. Nobody cares who they hurt. I want to know, how many people have been deeply, deeply hurt by someone else's actions? And I want to know, how many of you, keep your hands up, have received an apology from any of those people? Put your hand down if you haven't. If you haven't, if you have, then your hand's up. Okay, almost all the hands went down. We have a few left. Why is it over here nobody knows to apologize? Over here, you're so afraid to be wrong or bad. You can't even say an apology. Do you know, I was on the plane. I said an apology to a woman because she, like, spilled her coffee, and she's like, it wasn't your fault. I was like, well, I know. She's operating from, no, I'm just sorry that happened. You spilled your coffee all over. See, light workers over here, our first thing is, I'm so sorry. We're not, we don't. We're not blaming ourselves. We've resolved issues of blame. We're not blaming ourselves. We actually care. <laughs> Over here, they can't even imagine that you would say sorry for anything. It's like the worst thing you could ever do to say sorry. You're wrong. You're bad. Horrible person. Because you said sorry. You take the blame. All right. So these are virtues. You see, we're developing virtues of how to behave in a more appropriate way with integrity. That's all on six dimensional plane. And as you're working with that, you're activating your sixth, sixth strand of DNA, your virtues. Your greatest virtues are contained there. We'll also have the Akashic Records there on the sixth dimension. You know what the Akashic Records are? No? Yes? Okay. I'm an Akashic Records reader. I love the records. They're the information superhighway. Like everything that's ever been thought or said exists in the Akashic Records. It's a sixth dimensional frequency. Once you start learning how to tune into that, anyone can read the records. Everyone has access. No one's kept out. 
You just have to have the virtues to get in there. Because if you can't, if you don't have your virtues developed, just like if you don't have your, if you don't have your compassion really developed, you can't get to your other 10 strands because otherwise you might do some harm. Well, if you don't have your virtues developed, you can't really get in there, not really good, because otherwise you might do some harm. This is a do no harm reality. Make sense? And you're not leaving your body. You're exactly who you are. You've just changed and up-leveled. All right. When we start moving beyond the sixth dimension, we start activating more of the DNA. We have access to star family races and star codes. We start knowing who we are as star beings. We start resonating with Pallades, Syrians, all kinds of other beings, benevolent beings, and we start choosing who we are. We start redefining ourselves. We start recognizing the ascended master part of us, the angelic part of us. We all have it. There's no one that doesn't. It's just that if you think that someone else outside of you has it, you just you haven't leveled your awareness up to it yet. Make sense? Okay. So we can go beyond that. When you start getting to 13th dimension, 13th strand, you're talking about really shifting into that awareness of I am. And it's infinite, way beyond that. We're just covering the basics here. Make sense? Okay. No. No, you're not. But some children now who are very progressed, especially when they're born into very progressed family, we might identify them as indigo children or rainbow children. They typically do have a lot more of their DNA activated, a lot more. But they're usually born to very advanced families, although not necessarily, but they're very advanced children. Yeah? But we in this room, we have to activate it. We do. We have to, because we were born in the old paradigm, especially if they're born 2012 and after. They're born in the new paradigm. They're already born in a new frequency range. The whole, all these new vibrations and frequencies were never available. We weren't vibrationally compatible with them before, whereas we are now. Make sense? By the way, does everyone know what the Schumann's resonance is? Schumann's resonance is really active today, for example. So this meditation we're about to start is going to be phenomenal. But the idea is that what the Schumann's resonance is a measurement of the frequency of the vibration of Earth. This is developed by Winfred Schumann, who was a scientist who knew how to measure the vibrational frequency of Earth. So in the old, um, oh my, not so much old paradigm, but when it was first started in the early 1900s, when he started measuring, frequencies were so low. They were like 7, 7.5. Where's the lowest frequency on the planet? Well, fear is the low, lowest frequency, but on the planet, your lowest frequencies are places where there's war, fighting, and suffering especially places where the most war or fighting is, where's the highest frequencies? Rainforests, nature, places where people aren't, and places where monks and Buddhists, you know, monks and are meditating 24-7, highest frequencies. Well, now on planet Earth, these frequencies are skyrocketing. So if they started at the early 1900s when they were being measured, a high, high frequency was 7.5, now you've got frequencies topping beyond 40. Some are measured sometimes at 70, and they can track, they're starting to track it according to how people are meditating, groups of meditations and things like this, right? So we actually are contributing to raising the frequency of planet Earth, and as the frequency raises, consciousness and awareness raises with it. Can we understand? All right, so this is why meditation is so important, and this is why these activations are so important, so that's what we're going to do now. Is everyone good? Okay, now this is the part, you guys in the hallway, if you want to sit down and participate, you can. Um, but you won't have too much fun standing. The only thing I want to say is if you're in it now, you're in it to stay. I don't want to make it too dark. That's too dark for me. I need to see. If you're in it now, you're in it to stay. Please don't get up mid. Make sure your phones are off. Good time for water. Okay, I want to give you a couple. Okay, so we have a good. I have until 7:30 close, right? Okay. Okay, and I can go five minutes over. So we're gonna have a good 30 minutes. I want to um, tell you two quick things, please, please. Tomorrow I have a lecture all about the DNA. If you're here tomorrow, Sunday, I don't remember what time it is, but can I, thank you. It's in the book. Monday for post-conference, we do DNA activation. We're going to go into the DNA, into the codes, clear out that stuff that's not working, and activate the stuff we've been talking about. So please join me for that post-conference Monday at 11 a.m. 
Also, make sure we have your email so we can get you all those amazing gifts. And by the way, there's, I'll tell you about some of these real quick. Um, there's, this is the flyer for all the free gifts. This is the flyer for Monday's event, the post-conference. If you want to come work with crystals, I didn't really talk about the crystal retreat, but I lead a week-long retreat in Arkansas. It's so off the charts fabulous. You will find your family. You will make lifelong friends. You will activate your pineal pituitary, awaken so many gifts within you. You'll learn how to activate your own DNA and interact with the crystals in a conscious way. I also have a light worker boot camp where you just get to spend a week, a long weekend with me. You get to go deep. You get all the attention and you know, support and assistance you need. So, and then if you want to do home study, this is a annual sacred membership. It has hundreds and hundreds of hours of video and audio tutorial on every imaginable topic for humans and animals in the spiritual metaphysical realm, plus tons of ebooks and PDFs. You will, tons of healing in there. It's such a good sacred membership worth way more than the price. If you use this flyer and this weekend only, there's a coupon code that will work, sacred seven. Okay, but you can get that afterwards, right? So, good, good, good. Okay, everyone comfortable? So I'm going to say a prayer. I'm going to lead you through the med. I like to start with the prayer because even though we are God, there is also aspect of many of us that's greater than our, where our awareness is at this now moment. Yes? I'm going to say a prayer. And while I do, okay, good. I want you to start getting very comfortable. Whenever, however you are comfortable, you can move your body any way you need to get comfortable without hitting anyone. Stretch, whatever you need to do to be comfortable. This particular meditation will be very interactive in the sense it's not, you're not designed to go floating anywhere or leaving your body. We're going to be actively working with the non-physical to bring forward whatever it is that's required for this group, yes? So you're breathing, long, slow, deep, rich, full breaths. Start in through the nose. Fill up your brain with breath. Whenever you want, you exhale. And the next breath is going to be longer, slower, deeper, richer, fuller. Whenever you're ready, you close your eyes, whenever you want. And with every breath that you're breathing in, the next breath is longer, slower, deeper, richer, and fuller. And when you're breathing this, start to identify the frequency of breath that you're calling into your body. The frequency is love. So begin really breathing in love and peace into your body. They're just energies. They respond to your awareness. Your awareness commands, breathe in love and peace. And start to feel the love and peace as it goes straight back to the center of the brain. It fills up the brain. Your brain fills up with love and peace. You exhale whenever it feels good. And on the next inhale, you now move that breath down, love and peace into the throat. And you feel your entire throat fill up, love and peace. You exhale whenever feels right to you. You breathe in your next deep, long, slow, rich breath. This time you travel it down. You feel it with your mind's awareness. Let yourself feel the love and peace traveling down from your brain into your throat, now down into your heart center. Let your entire heart and your whole heart center fill up with love and peace. And then breathe down. You understand we're just clearing, a little gentle clearing of your major chakra centers with love and peace. It's very simple. Now you breathe down the next breath. Deep, full, rich breath into the belly center. Fill it up, love and peace. Move anything that needs to move. With your awareness, put that love and peace. Any organ or space in the body that needs it, anywhere you need extra attention, breathe in love and peace. Move it down now from the belly and all the midsection into the reproductives. Fill up the entire reproductive center with love and peace. And when you're ready, next breath, move it to the buttocks area. Fill up the entire base of your body, love and peace, right? You're just relaxing your body, you're just prepping. This is the early stuff. Next long, slow, deep, rich, full breath. You're gonna drop that love and peace all the way down. You know this process, you've done it before. You drop love and peace down, no way to do it wrong, through the floor beneath you, and all the way down through layers and layers of earth. So layers of earth, and then you drop down, you find the sand, you drop down into the ocean. There's no way to do this wrong. You're sensing, feeling, seeing, imagining, whatever's right for you. 
through all the ocean, into the ocean floor, down through the ocean floor, layers and layers of sediment, empty space in the center of the earth, and you drop that love down, in the center of the earth is the crystalline realm, crystalline kingdom, crystalline consciousness. This is crystals. There really are huge crystals in the center of the earth. Drop your love down and your peace. Wrap it in, through, and around these crystals. There's no way to do this wrong. It's all energy. Now, with your next comfortable breath, breathe it up. This time you're bringing crystal consciousness, crystalline consciousness, Christ consciousness, even a crystal itself, it's coming back up through all those layers of earth. You're breathing it up, this time up from the center of the earth, up through your base, so the buttocks area. Now take a breath of love and peace up from the crystalline realm and ripple it out like a crystal in a pond all around you. You build your container. Build that love all around your base and ripple it out all around you. There's nothing but love and peace rippling out from your base chakra, your buttocks area. Next breath, rise it up now. Move the breath of the love up into the reproductive center. Same thing, like a crystal rises up, bringing crystalline consciousness, Christ consciousness, nothing to do with religion. Breathe it up into that reproductive. Let all that love and peace expand through your reproductive center and ripple it out all around you. You're building your container, surrounding yourself with this love and peace as you breathe it in. Next, long, slow, deep, comfortable breath. Rise it up into the lower Dan Chen, right below the belly button. Breathe up, fill up every organ in your body, stomach, digestive system, pancreas, every part of that area, liver, kidneys, just fill it up with love and peace, all your midsection. Fill all that area. Make sure you get the back, the bones, the spine, just fill it up, love and peace. Expand out like a ripple, building your container of love and peace all around you. What you expand out around you is what you are infused within. It's infused within you. Rise it up now from the belly, up into the high, into the mid-range of the heart and the high heart. So all around you now, fill up that heart center, breasts, upper back, spine. Fill it up, love and peace. Breathe it up. These are just vibrations. You're just setting yourself up for success here, yeah? Getting yourself into receivership. Relaxing the body, putting it in homeostasis. Breathing in love and peace. Moving, relaxing, whatever you need. Ripple effect it out all the way around you. Expanding your container. And another long and slow and deep breath. Now rise it up into the throat center. As you fill up the throat center, neck, mouth, teeth, gums, with love and peace, feel it. Feel it fill up in your throat center and expand it around. Replace any energy in your mouth, any tightness, tension with that love and peace and expand it out all around you. Next, long, slow, deep, comfortable breath. Reach to the center of the brain. Fill it up. Fill up your pineal gland, your pituitary gland, your master glands, third eye. Fill it up with love and peace. Breathe it straight back to the brain. Feel your brain fill up with love and peace. Exhale whenever you're ready. Ripple effect out like a crystal is with you, inside of you. Now I want you to reach for the top of your scalp. So with your next breath, feel for the top of your brain, lots of you got it already, for the top of your brain underneath the scalp. Just keep feeling, keep breathing love and peace and feel with your mind's awareness, top of the brain under the scalp. I want you to keep reaching for that space and I'm gonna say the prayer as we get underway. You keep breathing love and peace and when I say feel, I, you can keep your hand there, but when I say feel, I mean with your mind. So with your mind, feel with your mind the top of your brain under your scalp. What you're going to notice is a slight pressure or a tingling. You'll know you're there because suddenly you realize you're a little bit altered. There you go. More of you there. If you think you're not there, that's okay. Breathe some more love and peace. Feel with your mind for the top of the brain under the scalp. Divine Source, Creator, God of all that is infinite love, infinite light, infinite presence, infinite consciousness, infinite wisdom, all that is, each and every one of our own high selves, God selves, original source, divinity, divine selves, right here, right now, come forward right here, here and now, fully, holy, and completely present and conscious and aware of each and every one of us, all here, right now, in this unified field of infinite love, infinite light, infinite peace, infinite presence, infinite wisdom, infinite consciousness, angels, archangels, masters, teachers, loved ones. 
ascended masters, beings of love and light, star family races whose only desire and intention for this now moment is to be fully, holy, and completely in service and contribution for 100% positive upliftment of all concerned with harm to none. We call you all forward. Zero debt incurred now or at any point in the future by anyone. We all here now unanimously agree. With your mental state, you agree if you so choose. We unanimously agree for the greatest good of all, the, one, the positive benefit of all, and the maximum benefits of all concerned with zero, with zero debt incurred, zero harm to anyone. We intend for the maximum benefits of all concerned here and now. Let what's meant to be heard and said be heard and said. Let what's meant to be healed and resolved be healed and resolved. Let what's meant to be witnessed be witnessed. Let what's meant to be done be done for the greatest good of all with harm to none here and now. We give thanks. We give thanks for the presence of all those beings we have now called forward in our own high selves and our own divine divinity. We give thanks now that it is done and it is done in the most magnificent, fabulous, fantastic, fulfilling way possible and imagine for all beings concerned. We give thanks and we let it be. We know it is done as we are unanimously agreed. It is done. It is done. It is done. So it is. Thank you. Now, as you're breathing now, right? I want you to now this time, if you haven't felt that at the top of your brain, it's okay. So just now I want you to drop all that breath down into your heart. All parts of you and your consciousness and awareness drop into your heart. You will still hear me speaking, but as if you are collapsing into the deepest, deepest part of you, you'll hear me, you'll be breathing, just keep falling into your heart. We call for the ever being of each individual here now, your ever being, which is your basically your oversoul, the God that created you as an individual. And you're just gonna keep dropping into your heart and trusting that in the depth of your heart, all there is is love, and all you are is love. And all there is is peace. And all you are is peace. And you are aware of yourself as love and peace. You keep dropping into your own heart here now. Keep dropping and falling so deeply that all there is is your awareness of how deeply in love you are. You breathe. You relax. You drop deeper into the heart. So right here, right now, we have some, we certainly have some information, energy coming through. I'm going to pause here. Star family races, intergalactic tribe coming forward here now. Beloved ones, here we are all gathered here with you today. It is time for a most harmonious time for humanity. While there will be more of those awakening at this time at what we perceive to be as what we recognize to be that which you would refer to as the third wave. The third wave is benevolent beings more and more coming into alignment with your benevolence. More and more awakening for all of you, each of you, every one of you. You are indeed the divine you have been waiting for. You are indeed here now to awake up, awaken to those gifts that would, which have been within you all this time. Indeed, you know it's true. Indeed, you know it's real. Indeed, you have known all along. Your compass, your guiding star will be your love, will be your joy, could never and would never cause you any pain or suffering. Your compass will always be that which uplifts and inspires. Let yourself know this, for indeed it is so. Your compass will be that which leads you to your greatest happiness and fulfillment, health and well-being. This is nothing new. It has been said before. It will be said again. For some reason, humanity seems to believe that they've been separated or lost. In fact, nothing could be further from the truth. There is nowhere outside of you. There is nothing outside of you. There is no one outside of you. There is you. And you are all that is. And you will always be. And now it is the time for you to awaken. You've known this all along. You knew all along that this moment in time would come. The question is so, solely this. This question is how will you awaken? Will you choose to awaken in a way that is good and right and aligned for you? Will you choose to awaken in a way that feels good and right? Or will you choose to suffer some more? The choice is yours, but let it be known this. While your free will will always be honored and acknowledged by your own divinity, by the God that you are, at the same time it is so. That this is said and said again. There is no free will other than the will of the divine. You are the divine. And your will is to awaken, to awaken to love, to peace, to joy and greater potentials. This opportunity is here for you now. As you continue to follow your true north, your guiding star, your force of love, 
you will find that all things awaken to you and for you and from you. You will find more and more and greater and greater fulfillment and happiness. You will meet up with those that you love so much. You will meet up with all of your greatest dreams fulfilled. However, each time you take a turn, so, so to speak, in a wrong direction, which there can never be, or wrong. Each time you take a turn that is off center or out of alignment, your turn will be one of suffering or pain. As you take a right turn, your true north star, your turn will be a turn for greater joy and happiness and fulfillment. It's a simple guiding force. There's nothing else to say in regard to this other than to say there are many teachers along the way. There will be many forces and guiding, guiding forces that lead you. There will be many to support and assist you. There will many, be many to teach you distraction. Recognize and know this. Every enemy is a teacher. And every loved one is someone you're becoming and who you already are. Let your enemies be your teachers and salute them and honor them. Once you recognize to love and honor your enemies, you will see them as your teachers. See them as giving you the gifts of knowledge and wisdom you came here to claim. See them as beautiful and brilliant aspects of your own tree of life. See them and salute them as your teachers and you will be done with them forever. And they will transmute into the love that you have become. No longer see yourself as separate from those experiences, persons, places, or things which you seem to perceive yourself to be separate from and recognize that they are aspects of your fractal. Just as a crystal, just as a water molecule might be perceived under a microscope to be beautiful, perfect, and clear, so are you. Anything which is not is just another fractal that needs and requires some form of resolution. Now is the time for you to do so. And the power is within you. It has been all along. We bid you adieu. Thank you. Okay, we're going to do some clearing because I'm aware of timing. So I'm going to ask the collective here. You're still dropping into your heart because as you drop into your heart, what you're doing is activating your own dormant potential, right? You just keep breathing and relaxing and dropping deeper into your heart. Ever beings of each individual now surrounding and infusing you. This is good. Each and every one of your ever beings now your ever being is the aspect of you that is an eternal God divine source being. This ever being is energetically surrounding you as an individual in pure, perfect, absolute, unconditional, primordial love. Primordial love is undiluted from any human interpretation of what love is or how it behaves. Allow this ever being now to surround you. Feel as you drop into your heart even deeper, this love coming in, through, and around you. And now without any breath of your own necessarily, not any work on your own part, it is infusing each and every cell, proton, neutron, electron, particle, atom, subatomic particle, and all space in between your entire energy field with absolute pure divine source primordial love. An absolute, pure, divine source, primordial peace. And now from within you, any and all awarenesses and or gifts of consciousness, any and all awarenesses that you're meant to receive at this time related to you, your life, your body, your being, your experience in physical form, right now will be activated and awakened within you. All you need to do is say yes, please, or yes, thank you. You take a breath. And you, you receive, right? Drop deeper into the heart and you allow. You're not going to necessarily be aware of it in the now moment. Let it be awakened within you. Whatever gifts of consciousness with and from divine source truth, divine source point of view, divine source perspective, understanding, definition, divine source perspective, right? This is aligning you with it, you elevating you, your consciousness. You're just dropping into your heart and allowing it to be so. These gifts are directly related to you, whoever you are as an individuated being. Let it be so now. You take a breath, you relax, you drop deeper into the heart. There's no way to do it wrong. And you notice whatever you notice. Whatever you notice is fine. 
For anyone listening in delayed playback, this activation, this part, it's absolutely just as effective in delayed playback on a CD or audio or video because it's, the energy is from source, right? You just allow, you notice what you notice. Thank you, there it goes, nice. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just identify any and all programs, implants, explants, points of view, perspectives, ideologies, frequencies, energies, vibrations, which are no longer matching or exceeding your frequency of love and your frequency of peace. Any and all energies, frequencies, vibrations, programs, implants, explants, points of view, perspectives, ideologies, which are non-beneficial to you, now being identified and gently, lovingly, also, sorry, being paused here, any and all energies, frequencies, vibrations, programs, implants, explants, points of view, perspectives, ideologies, frequencies, etc., which are no longer benevolent for you, non-benevolent, non-beneficial, and any and all that do not match or exceed your frequency of love, your frequency of light. Now, being located and identified by divine source, creator, God of all that is, the group collective, and the God source being that we are here as a unified field, lifted, removed, dissolved, taken away, transmuted into love and light. Understand there's nothing for you to do except to consent and allow. 100% benefit, harm to zero. Let it be done. Take a breath. Drop into the heart. You get a clearing, right? Yes. And just notice. You just notice. There's nothing to do. You just notice. Whatever you notice is fine. Hook it, you got. Whoa. Transmuting density into light. It's that simple. It's so simple. Even in the moment, you barely notice anything's happening. You just notice what you notice. You feel relaxed. You feel peaceful. You feel love. You take a breath. You drop into your heart. Divine Source, Creator, God of all that is now, that which has been removed cleared and resolved. These gifts more further and fully activated and awakened within your consciousness, that which you have been unconscious of, that which you have not been re absent from your receivership up until this now moment, now being activated and awakened within you. Gifts of consciousness that you are now ready to receive as a result of this now moment. Whatever those gifts are that are most beneficial and benevolent to you, whoever you are, which is uniquely appropriate for you, your body, your being, your life, your living, and only as is for your highest and most benevolent best, with harm to none. If you're willing to receive now, let it be so. Long, slow breath, drop into your heart. Yes, please, yes, thank you is all that allows. And then you drop in your heart, you just notice there's nothing for you to do in the now moment Everything gets transmuted. The mind, the awareness becomes more aware of it in the after now moments. The result happens after it happens in the non-physical. Allow it to be so. Notice what you notice. I got to get out of the way here. Yes, yes, yes. There we go, good. Now you notice what you notice. I'm asking, I'm taking a pause. What's next? Okay. So we're gonna activate a little more of your own unique gifts, talents, and abilities. Each and every one of you has a divine mission, divine purpose to be here. Each and every one of you has a reason for being alive at this time. You're not meant to be a sandbag. You're not meant to be unconscious. You're not meant to continue to perpetuate an old paradigm that is now extinct. You're meant to awaken the God source within you, which chooses to live in and through you as you. You are all angelics. You are all ascended masters. You are all divine source incarnate. Now at this time, receive your gifts. Mm. Thank you. This now, royal codes. Royal codes will now be activated and awakened crown, a crown of your glory, a crown, this time a true crown, a, a true crown, your royal crown, and also your royal cape. This may be etheric, unseen to you on a visual plane. Nonetheless, it will be provided to you, for it is recognized in the higher realms. It is an aspect of your consciousness awakening to your true glory, and the royalty which is within you and always has been, receive it now. It's a crown of royalty, 
codes of royalty and so-called a cape of royalty, which is really further to be for further to be followed up by your wings. Thank you. So now, just this is awakening codes within you. Allow it to be so if you so choose. 100% positive upliftment for all with zero harm and zero debt incurred now at any point in the future. Breathe, receive, consent, and allow. Drop into the heart. If you so choose, you say yes, thank you. Yes, and then you just notice whatever you notice. Okay. Full integration here. Nice, good. Um, two beings stepping forward in particular. First, Archangels. Archangel Mikael and multiples of the Archangel realm. Gabriel, Uriel, Ariel, Azrael, Hanael. You may or may not be aware of them in, within your visual awareness. Nonetheless, their frequency is here, fully present. We called you forward. They called us forward. We called. We were called, and here we are. This particular activation will provide for you opening of the chakras behind the shoulder blades. Behind each of the shoulder blades actually reside in the etheric realms your wings. They do not exist in the physical reality, but they do exist in the etheric realms and the non-physical. When you open these chakras, you start to begin to feel the lightness, the effervescence of your body and being. It will assist you in elevating to higher frequencies. Therefore, with your consent at this time, we shall, with each of you, as you proceed, open these chakra centers behind each of the shoulder blades. As it is done, with your permission, you will feel a sense of lightness, most likely. Many of you may not. Nonetheless, it will be done. And this will allow for this lightness, essentially a sprouting of your own wings. If you so choose and consent, allow it to be done. Allow it to be so now. Take a long, slow breath. You may put your awareness behind your shoulder blades. As it is done, so it shall be. So you put your awareness behind the shoulder blades and you may feel or sense or see either a pressure or a lightness, either way. It's fine, there you go, nice. Beautiful. And now there's more. Order of Melchizedek, step forward. For each and every being here, many of you have received this before, nonetheless it shall be done again. If you are so willing, Order of Melchizedek, Melchizedek, shall now ignite and activate flower of life and various codes in the palm. All of the hands have many codes and chakra centers, chakra points, energy points. If you place your palms up in an upward position on your lap, it shall be quite easy to activate this flower of life and other similar codes according to sacred geometrical patterns which already exist in your hands. Nonetheless, as they get activated, you'll start to feel more energy in your hands. This will further enable you to do blessings and healings on one another and on your world. All you shall touch shall turn to gold. You may not be consciously aware all the time when it is done. Nonetheless, just like the ripple effect of the crystals you breathed up into you and through you, so there is a ripple effect of the palms of your hands when they are activated with these codes of sacred geometrical patterns. And therefore, if you show... So choose and consent now. Allow your palms to be face up and so it shall be done. Breathe, receive, consent and allow and notice whatever you notice for all there is is your awareness as it is done, so it is. And you may put your, your awareness in your palms and you may feel and notice a slight pressure. You may feel and notice a tingling, a heat sensation. Those of you who are also engaged already as healers, this will further activate more of your own dormant abilities. Hands-on healing is real. Everyone's able. You simply notice what you notice. As it is done and so it is, it is done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pausing here. Okay. I'm just about out of time, so I'm going to start to bring you out of this meditation. Right before I do, I just ask if there's any last thing here from higher consciousness that's meant to be provided for the group. So just a brief pause. 
there's many divine goddesses as a collective group joined together. A brief moment to share. It has been said here now, as it is true indeed, that your feminine energies are now being reawakened and reactivated within each and every one of you, restoring balance to the masculine and feminine which has been present on your earth, indeed lacking. Therefore, at this time, understand it is true by embodying more of the divine feminine and becoming more of the divine feminine within you, regardless of gender, you will indeed heal and resolve the issues on your planet, provided that you allow it to be so. The feminine always will respond in such a matter. Yes. It simply says yes and allows. As you incorporate in body the word yes in your language, which is not to say that you say yes to anything that would be harmful or detrimental, but rather yes to understanding, yes to allowing, yes to peace, yes to expansion, yes to all those things associated with that which has been defined as your North Star, as you allow the yes in your world, yes to forgiveness, yes to love, as you allow these feminine energies to take more hold of you, regardless of gender, you will come to find a more renewed, renewed and restored balance within you and within your planetary body and system. Therefore, at this time, it is our great pleasure and wish to provide to you more of the divine, sacred, feminine key codes which are dormant within you now ready to be activated, which will align me, you more fully, wholly, and completely with the divine feminine which is within you. If you so choose now, please allow. We are your divine goddesses. You know us by name. You have met us before. You will know us again. We come at this moment without individuality name for the purpose of your experience of linear time. Allow it to be so if you so choose. Breathe, receive, consent, and allow. I will tell you that many of them, you know their names, right? Lakshmi, Abundantia, Guinevere, Lady Nada, Kuan Yin, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, they're all just, they, they'll sometimes for the purpose of time come in as a group, even though they're they're all their own ascended masters, divine goddesses of their own. So just restoring some balance and feminine masculine energies for us and further activating the feminine energy in those of us that ready for more of that. Let me get out of the way here while this is done and complete. And you notice what you notice and you drop into the heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is done. Good, so we're going to come out of this meditation gently. So here, we did not go anywhere. We did not leave our bodies. We did not float anywhere. We didn't visit the astral realms. We were in our heart center. So this time you just start restoring that breath in the same way, but you start shifting up out of the heart center, gently elevating yourself out of the heart. Your awareness is just shifting from deep within your heart back into your brain. So you start bringing your awareness up into your brain and you start gently moving any part of your body that needs to stretch, being mindful of your neighbors. And any part of your ankles or your toes, you know this routine, your legs, your hips, your buttocks, your waist, your arms, your fingers, your neck, your chest. Before you open your eyes, if it's not too late, wrap your arms around yourself. And give yourself an out loud verbal acknowledgement. Anything you need to hear. Anything you need to hear. I love you. I appreciate you. I value you. I honor you. Say it out loud. Come on. I respect you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for being here. I love you. Big hug. And when you're ready, final stretches. And opening your eyes. Coming back into this space here now. Fully present, you didn't go anywhere, and you didn't take on anyone's energy because you just build the container around yourself, yeah? We're not playing with mixing energies. You don't have to concern yourself. Anything that's yours is yours. How are you guys doing? How was that for all of you? Awesome. All right, so I want to remind you of a couple things before we final close because I'm, I'm actually good on time. I usually go very long, so I got a few minutes. Please, please make sure we have your contact information. If you didn't get to give it, I'll give you some site, some um, 
places where you can go to get gifts, right? But I have new ones to give that I haven't released yet. LoriSpagna.com forward slash free gifts forward slash DNA. You can sample out a DNA activation for yourself. LoriSpagna.com forward slash free gifts forward slash animals. Tons of great juicy content for you and your animals, animal telepathy, energy healing, etc. LoriSpagna.com forward slash free gifts forward slash star seed. If you resonate as that star seed indigo family tribe and you want to know more about that. If you want to join me, I would love, love, love to have you with me on Monday post-conference for the DNA activations. If you liked this, you haven't seen anything. So much gets even better, way better. So you will love it. Your body will love it. And thank you for it. That's the post-conference event Monday, February 10th, 11 a.m. Century A. Okay? If you buy in advance, it's, you save 20 bucks. Um, also, if you are interested in joining me in Arkansas, you will love it. Arkansas Retreat Flyer, it has the crystal heart on the top, on the front here. It's on my website at lorispagna.com under the live events tab. And if you're interested in the sacred membership, this is the flyer. It has these patterns up here. It's an annual sacred membership. It has hundreds of hours of content, activations, healings, clearings, DNA stuff. And Lightworker Boot Camp, if you want up close and personal with me. You guys, my name is Lori Ann Spagna. I love you so much. Thank you so, so much for having me. You guys are awesome. <laughs>